So you want to be found in Etsy search, but you're not quite sure exactly how Etsy search works and how you can organize your listings and your shop to best be found in search. That is what I'm going to tell you about in today's video. I'm going to go through all of the areas that Etsy looks at when it comes to ranking your shop and your listings in search. So let's get into it. My name is Jess Van Den. I've been running my own successful Etsy shop since 2008. It's called Ethereal. You can check it out via the link below if you're curious. So I've been working with the Etsy algorithm for a very long time and I focus almost exclusively on bringing traffic to my shop via Etsy search. So let's start with this. The thing you need to know about the Etsy algorithm, one is it's always changing. So you do need to keep up with what it's going to be doing in the future. You can't just kind of set and forget and then ignore it forever. Two, the things I'm going to cover today, they don't tell you the weighting. They don't tell you which of these things is most important and how much weight each of these things is given in search because they are not going to tell us the exact details because then people would game the system. Same as Google. They don't tell people exactly how it works. They need to keep the exact mechanics of it secret. That being said, they do tell us a lot about what we can do to increase our rankings in the search algorithm. So that is what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So number one is your titles and tags, attributes and categories. So the way this works is there's two parts of this. There's what's called query matching and then there's ranking. So query matching is where somebody types into the search bar, simple sterling silver earrings. Each of those words and all of it as like keywords. So sterling silver would be a keyword in and of itself as well. What's going to happen is when they type that in, Etsy will trawl through all of the listings in Etsy and it will find any listing that has any of those uh, words in the titles, tags or attributes. So if you use any of those words, you will show up in that search. The question is, where will you show up in that search? And that is determined by a number of different things. But one thing it is determined by is the second part, which is ranking. And there's a few different things that go into ranking. So let's just start with query matching and talk about titles, tags, and your attributes. So your title obviously is the title that you type in. Your tags is in the tag section of your Etsy listing and your attributes are that big long section that you scroll through at the kind of top where you can pick from drop down menus and such. So your attributes actually act as extra tags. So that's really good to know. What you want to do is you want to put the most relevant keywords into your title and into your tags. They do say that exact phrase matches will rank higher than non-exact. So for example, uh, if somebody typed in simple sterling silver earrings, and I literally had that in my title as simple sterling silver earrings, that would rank higher than somebody who had all of those same words, but they weren't in that same keyword phrase. Okay. So that is something you do have to take into account. It's difficult because you never quite know which way you're going to go. Basically, there's kind of two ways you can go here. You can try to hit as many uh, searches as possible, or you can try more so to be more relevant in the searches you're targeting. Okay. So if you're just like, I want to hit as many searches as possible, I'm not too concerned about the exact phrases. I just want to get as many words in. That's where in your tags, you would literally keyword stuff your tags. So you have 20 characters in your tags and you could put multiple individual words in there that didn't make a keyword phrase just to hit more searches. Or you could be more um, strategic about trying to hit particular searches. So say I wanted um, sterling silver earrings, I would put that in. I'm not sure if that would fit in 20 characters, but you know, you want to get whatever that keyword phrase that you're targeting, you want to put that in both your title and in your tags. So another thing they do say as well is that if a word or phrase appears in both the title and the tags, it will be ranked as more relevant than something that only has those words in the title or in the tags. So if I had sterling silver earrings in both my title and my tags, I would rank higher for that um, in search than if it just had 
that in one or the other of those things. Also, words at the beginning of the title are more important than words towards the end of the title. So this is obviously important for humans as well. And don't forget humans when it comes to this. Make sure your title reads like something humans would want to read. Uh, Same with your description, although descriptions don't actually count towards your Etsy search rankings. They do count towards your external search engine rankings. So don't neglect them, but they We're not going to talk about them today because they don't count for Etsy search. So when somebody looks at your items in search, they see those first few words. So make sure they are the most relevant words that describe the product you are selling. Okay, so long story short, try to come up with as many keywords and keyword phrases that directly explain and describe your product as possible. Get as many of them that you can into your titles and your tags and using your attributes as extra tags, remember. Put the most relevant keyword phrase or keywords into your title and your tags. And, you know, if you have extra space left over in your tags, say, you know, you've got a tag with a word that only has five characters in it, I would use the extra space in that tag and get some extra words in there to try to hit more relevant searches. Okay, so the next thing to think about when it comes to ranking, i.e., your item has shown up in search, but how highly does it show up in search is your listing quality. Now, new shops and new listings have a neutral listing quality because the Etsy algorithm hasn't had a chance to figure out whether people are liking this shop or listing or not. But as time goes on, your listings will accumulate a listing quality score. So this is affected by how many people click on your item, how many people favorite your item, and how many people purchase your item. So basically, if you can increase the conversion rate on your item, i.e. the number of people who click through and then purchase the item, the higher that item will subsequently show up in search. Now, this is obviously an item that is a renewable item, so a reproducible item. One-of-a-kind items, it's a bit of a problem here because you're not going to relist that same item again because you have a completely different item. So that will come down to the clicks and the favorites more than the purchase behavior. Let me just clarify here about the clicks, favorites, and purchases. These are clicks, favorites, and purchases that have come via Etsy search. And this is where sending a lot of external traffic to Etsy can actually hurt you when it comes to your rankings. Because if you're sending a lot of external traffic to Etsy, that can negatively affect your listing quality score because more people are clicking on something but not actually perhaps favoring it or buying it. Okay, so the next thing that affects your ranking is your the what they call customer and market experience, I think. Yeah, customer and market experience. So basically this comes down to how well you have um, taken care of your customers in the past and where your standing is, like that you're in good standing with Etsy, i.e. you haven't had cases opened against you, things which could negatively impact your rankings. So what you need to know here is that you want to have a fully filled in policies page or section, a fully filled in about section, and obviously, Uh, good reviews will impact this in a positive way. So if you have a nice about section, a nice policy section, and you have positive reviews, this is going to increase the quality score of your shop overall. And that therefore will increase the ranking of your products in search. Another thing that has an impact is recency. So that is how recently something has been listed or renewed. So they explicitly say listed or relisted. So basically this is, you know, back back in the day when I first started, the Etsy algorithm was, was much simpler than it is today. And recency was really highly rated, like you would rank really highly in search if your stuff was new. So that led to kind of the renewal wars where everybody would renew stuff constantly to try to get on top of the search. That is not so much a thing anymore, but it does have an impact still to this day. If you renew stuff, so this is renewing something before it like runs out organically, that little listing that you renew will get a little tiny bump in search. Again, we don't know how much, they will never tell us exactly how much, but it does definitely still get um, some sort of bump in the search rankings. I, from personal experience, still do renew, I call it renewing, I still do renew stuff 
on a somewhat regular basis, if things are a little bit slow or whatever. And anecdotally, that does seem to increase my sales. So take that with a grain of salt, but that is my personal experience. Another thing that will affect your ranking is whether or not you offer the US free shipping guarantee. If you offer this, your uh, items will get a boost in search as opposed to someone selling the same item with all the same details who do not offer the US free shipping guarantee. So that's something to take into account when you're deciding whether or not you do want to offer that free shipping guarantee. I personally offer it in my shop. Uh, I'm in Australia. The only reason I can offer that these days with the price of international shipping as it is now after COVID is because Etsy's brought in something called domestic and global shipping, where everybody except those in the US and India can actually now set two prices in your shop. You can set a domestic price for an item and an international price, which allows you to offer free international shipping. I've done a video about that. I'll put a card to that up here. If that's new to you and you want to work, uh, find out how that works, go check that one out. But if you're outside of the US or India, it's super duper helpful and I would highly recommend considering that. Another part of the Etsy search puzzle is something called context specific ranking. I have touched on that a little bit previously, but basically what that means is there is no one Etsy search result ever. Okay. Every single person searching on Etsy is going to see a different search result. So forget about this whole being on the first page of Etsy stuff that is far, far in the past. Every single person is going to see a different search result based on a few things about them, their location, the time of day, their shopping behavior, their previous um, clicks, likes, whatever, all of the things, all of their activity on, on Etsy in the past is going to influence the search results that they get. Okay. So if, if you hear that phrasing about I'm on the first page, well, you might be on the first page for you. (laughs) That doesn't mean that's what other people are seeing. So this is really important to take into account. There's not a whole bunch you can do to influence content specific ranking because it is based on the buyer behavior. It's not really based on anything you are doing apart from like maybe your location or Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I can think of that you, uh, your language as well. So they kind of take in to account translations. You know, if somebody is uh, in another language searching Etsy, your shop's been listed in English, it automatically translates for them. If you are multilingual, it's a good idea to set up translations yourself manually, because you'll probably do a better job than, uh, than a translation machine will. So that is a way you can improve perhaps a little bit your rankings in other countries where you speak the language, but basically just be aware that this is a factor. And so don't be surprised when, you know, two or three people search for your stuff and they all get different results. That's because this content context specific ranking thing is happening and it's influencing what a person sees individually. There is one more thing that I almost never hear anybody talk about. And the only reason I really know about it is because of the document that I dug for in Etsy. This document is called um, Search and Advertisement Ranking Disclosures document that Etsy has. And it's something called frequency capping. Yes. So they will actually control how often a certain uh, item shows up in search. So frequency capping, and I'm going to quote from them here to limit the number of times the same listing or shop appears at the top of results for a specific user or keyword. Okay. So there is some sort of artificial control here about the frequency of how often your shop or your listings are going to show up for a specific user or under a specific keyword. Now, the reason they're doing this, I would suspect, is to give more people a chance to show up and get sales, basically. So if you've ever noticed that your shop seems to be doing really well, and then suddenly a particular product is getting less sales or less views, uh, or your shop is getting less views or less sales, and then it sort of picks up again in future, this might have something to do with it. And obviously, we have zero control over this aspect of things. It is something that the algorithm does for whatever reason that the algorithm 
does it? So this might be the missing part of the puzzle that has been concerning you uh, about why this certain behavior is happening in your shop. It may be because of frequency capping. One other thing to note here in this particular document, they also clarify that your organic search results have no relationship on whether or not you pay for ads on Etsy. So if you do pay for ads on Etsy, those are completely separate to where your organic search results will be. In other words, they don't prioritize organic search for people who pay them for ads. Okay, the final thing that can affect your ranking is your location. So if you are selling to people in Australia, Canada, or the EU, or you're a buyer in those locations, your results will vary and you will more likely see stuff that's closer to you higher in search. This is not a global thing. It's only in these locations, according to Etsy. So keep that in mind that like I'm an Australian seller, other Australian buyers are actually going to see my stuff preferentially to a point in the search rankings versus um, an international seller who's selling the same thing. And the reason Etsy says that they do this is because they say that buyers in these countries have stated that they like to buy from local people. They've probably shown that in their buying behavior. So that's something that they have put into the algorithm. And that is Etsy search in a very short nutshell. Obviously, there's more details we could go into about various aspects of this. I've got other videos on my channel. I actually have a whole hour long workshop uh, and I have another one coming up later this year, which is part of the Etsy U program, which is a program that Etsy puts on and they get people in the community like myself to take uh, like lessons with them and then teach workshops. Uh, it's all free. So that's going to be coming up on my channel later this year. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those workshops. All of the information I have shared in this video today is directly from what Etsy have put out to you. I'll put a link below to the article that I'm kind of getting most of this information to. So you can go check that out as well if you want to look at um, the examples that Etsy uses and things like that. The thing to remember about Etsy search is you can do the best you can do and then it's kind of out of your hands. And it is something that you can work on over time as well, but don't be too full on about it. Like if you're changing your tags and your titles and things, give it time to work, give it like 30 days before you consider touching that item again. And my personal rule is if it's not broke, don't fix it. So I try not to mess with listings that are doing well. I try to mess with listings that are not doing well. I've made that mistake in the past. <laughs> where I'm like, this one's doing really well. Let's see if I can make it do better. And then I've broken it. So keep that in mind as well. Um, focus, try to focus on those listings that perhaps aren't doing so well. And remember these global things that I talked about. So having an about page filled in, your policies page, trying to get good reviews. Think about your free shipping and whether you're offering that or not. Remember that depending on your country, it might change your rankings and all of those sorts of things that are outside of just the listing itself that can have an impact and it's always just one big experiment we experiment with things we see what works we see what doesn't and then we just try and try again and we're all in the same boat we're all trying to do this so don't feel disheartened just take what i've shared with you today apply it to the best that of your ability and just keep working on it over time and you will see your rankings improve on Etsy. If you have any follow up comments or questions, let me know below in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and please feel free, of course, to share it with people in your Facebook communities, on Instagram, whatever, wherever you think it will help people who really want to make sure they're doing a good job and improve their search rankings on Etsy. And if you want some more Etsy education right now, go check out this video, which is all about six reasons why people might not be buying from you on Etsy. To be honest, making sure you rank well in search actually shouldn't be the first thing you focus on because, well, I'll explain why in this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.